Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Alexander. This is a man I don't think I have to introduce anymore. He is the man everybody talks about in the watch industry in the moment. George, uh, you took over Breitling half a year ago, a little bit longer. And since then, everything is upside down. You're turning the company more or less upside down. Um, you're repeating things you have been doing with IWC when you took over. You're questioning everything. And um, some of the hardcore Breitling collectors are a little bit upset. Is this what you have to do when you reposition retail when you take over a brand and when you put when you want to put your stamp on it uh, of course you have to uh, ask yourself what the uh, direction is you, you need to take for the future uh, what we have been doing over the last couple of weeks and months intensively is looking into the past and um, and uh, what is really astonishing is that you have a very hardcore vintage community yeah which is totally disconnected from the current uh, yeah. Breitling owners community. Um, and what we try to do is to bridge both communities, uh, which with products, by the way, like the Navi Timer 8, which is strongly in inspired by the past, by the board instruments, mm -hmm. by the pilot's watches Breitling used to produce in the 1930s, but towards something modern of, mm -hmm. uh, of today. So how are you going to uh, finish the exercise? You are provoking uh, the hardcore collectors. Some of them are pretty upset. I, I have been reading some, yeah, let's say, some comments that were not really pleasant uh, to, uh, about what uh, you're doing in the moment and some are very enthusiastic in the terms of they say, okay, this is finally product we can sell or sell very good. You, you also sold the old ones, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, the brand uh, has been very successful over the last uh, couple of years. Um, but uh, the question is, how can you uh, build really a worldwide brand? Mm -hmm. um, uh, how, can you, how can you be recognized on, on a worldwide level uh, um, as, as, as a strong brand? And, um, and how can we gain also a new customer base without, of course, stopping what we're doing today very successfully? Mm -hmm. So we have the big pilot's watches, which of course will remain in the collection, uh, but I think we need to introduce more classic watches, mm -hmm. uh, watches which are more inspired uh, and part of the history of the brand and this is why we have this amazing uh, uh, exhibition today and traveling around the world showing and showcasing 60 of the most iconic products uh, of, of the history of writing certainly not of the recent past but really of the history since the 1920s 30s mm -hmm. and 40s this was a part of Breitling that was hidden a little bit in the past because Schneider Teddy didn't really focus very much on it he had his vision about Breitling it was more a martial big strong black uh, army type of watches and you're bringing in more classical look more uh, more uh, decent uh, designs and maybe some softener can I can I can can we can we call it you put in some softener to the brand um, again, for me, what is important, one doesn't exclude the other. Okay. Uh, I think Brighton will remain what it is uh, today, which is certainly big pilot's watches, strong pilot's watches okay. with a strong message. But I think we can easily add something to the game. As I said, more classic, yeah, uh, yeah. more elegant, smaller, also for the okay. uh, for the Asian market and for many customers who have been requesting this. The first comment I got, the first comments I got on on uh, on my uh, my Instagrams were, okay, can you do smaller watches, more mm. civilized uh, sizes like 41, 42, 43 mm. uh, millimeters, and this is what we're bringing in. Mm. Uh, the ter uh, Breitling has developed uh, a variety of own movements in the last years. Are you going to continue to use them in the same amount or are you reducing it versus uh, more affordable products? Uh, I think we need both. We have the B01, which is our chronograph movement. And as you know, we are selling that movement also to Tudor and, Tudor, and we're buying the automatic movements from Tudor. So we have, an, uh, if you want, a manufacture uh, layer in our offering. But of course, we need also uh, more affordable uh, prizes uh, with ETA, Celita and Valjoux. So we're going to have both, but they will distinguish strongly in terms of aesthetics, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, executions, uh, and they will be a clear segmentation in terms of uh, looks and in terms of finishings um, uh, between both uh, categories if you want. Mm -hmm. The 
last uh, movement that they introduced was a split second chronograph so they they evolved the chronograph movement are you planning also to continue to develop on uh, the existing base uh, uh, yes yes we do okay we we absolutely want to develop um, our chronograph movement um, there will be more functions and specialities but what is very important to consider is the objective of writing is not to go upwards to go into high complications mm -hmm. and what they call odd Horlogerie uh, specialities. Now, what we want to do is in our price category between three and a half thousand and ten thousand, let's say, Swiss francs, mm. uh, being able to offer basically uh, um, the the whole um, historical DNA of mm. writing from mm. more classic watches to very sporty watches, including, by the way, ladies' watches. So we want to cover the vertical, uh, sorry, the, the horizontal aspect of of the brand and not go vertical. So you answered the question I would have asked now, which was, where's the top? So where, where's the, the, it's 10, 12,000 Swiss francs, something like this? Or? Yeah, steel on steel with, yeah. uh, uh, with our manufacture uh, movement. Uh, but again, we will start at 3,500 yeah, yeah. with, yeah. uh, with an automatic. We really want to be <coughs> inclusive. We, we don't want to be, uh, we want to attract more customers mm. uh, based on the DNA uh, of the brand and not be in that price category in the super niche uh, segment of the bulky big pilot's watches, mm -hmm. which is great. Again, we're going to keep that. But in that price category, we want to enlarge our offering and everything uh, will be based on, on history. And this is why we want to showcase to everybody Uh, what the brand uh, stands for mm. and 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 had as emblematic designs and um, and uh, yeah strengths. There's one name that uh, Breitling owns is Aviation, uh, and uh, can you imagine or can you think about uh, launching in the next years a new collection uh, that is called Aviation that would very uh, perfectly fit in the DNA of Breitling and that could be a totally new collection with a new design, new look, uh, new I features. Actually, um, yes, we own aviation and we will continue to work on aviation. Um, but on the other side, we want to reduce our collections, number of collections. Mm -hmm. I think the brand uh, product um, structure is, is complex for the customer, for the retailers, for the sales staff. It's complicated also to communicate. At the end of the day, there will be four lines mm -hmm. uh, in our segment. Is it segmented in earth, water, uh, pilots, and, and, uh, exactly. and classic? Or uh, we're going to, <coughs> to cover earth, water, uh, and air, mm -hmm. because this reflects again the DNA. The super ocean is is uh, is a diving watch, mm -hmm. and it's not a. So you're not giving watch. up the watch. The is super it? ocean, no, not of course not. There will be f uh, four segments and four uh, families with clear segments. Um, both aesthetically in terms of functions and in terms of prices. And we're going to dramatically simplify the collection. We're going to reduce from something like 600 uh, references to something like 120. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the brand uh, will be much more readable uh, <laughs> for the for the uh, consumer as, as it, is, it is today. And um, I can only repeat myself, I think what is important is to keep what we're doing today mm -hmm and in adding new elements which are part of the, our DNA. Is there any uh, line that will die in the collection? Of course there will be uh, lines which we are going to, uh, to, to, uh, to stop uh, in, the, in the future and, and this will go in parallel with, uh, uh, with uh, the introduction of new lines and this is what we're going to discuss today with our retailers who are all here uh, and, and we're going to go through this uh, with them. Is there one line that is in danger? The chronomat probably or uh, is there any line no, you I, would I, say? I mean, I think that's, the chronomat is certainly one of the most emblematic yeah, names. I'm just asking, I'm, uh, I'm names provoking and, a little bit. Uh, and, and, and designs and historical designs. And if there's something we need to do is, is really to, to, to work on that line, which was a rebirth of yes. writing in, in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but, but it slept a little bit, I think, to Konomat in the last years. They did a redesign again. They, they worked on I, the... On I, 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 I agree. I mean, many things were, were done on the line. Um, funnily, everybody is telling me that the original Konomat of the 1980s yeah. um, 
when really the brand re, uh, restarted was the nicest design. Yeah, and a little bit sexier than the one that is today on the market. <laughs> this, I mean, everybody has his opinion. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it does sell, but uh, it is a strong design. It, has, it is a strong name. It is a strong property yeah. of Brightling. And if there's something we want to keep, is the chronomat and uh, I would say the style of that of that line. But we have to rework it. Yeah, yeah. you could do a re-edition of the very f very first one Ernest Schneider did when he took over Breitling, the one he did for the Frecce Tricolore in the past. You remember that iconic yeah. watch? It looked it looked for yeah. today. You have to redesign it, but it was a, a very iconic watch. Absolutely, um, and and icons and classics can only be established by an evolutive design you know it 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 is adjusted every four or five years to 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 really establish it as an icon like the Porsche 911 has been evolving over generations yeah. and generations and generations and uh, what i can tell you there will be a gener a new generation mm -hmm. of the chronomat uh, but um, yeah in in but we need to keep again the dna of that line yeah. which is super recognizable yeah. uh, for for Brightling. Um, answer, give me an honest answer, Josh. Um, you have Guy Boff as your major designer in uh, uh, working for you. How much of influence is your personal influence on the products that really come on the market? I can't believe that you are not giving the final okay or not or change this. I'd like to have it more left, more right, more bright, more dark. Is you Are you involved in the product or are you really li leaving this uh, field to your people who are in the design? I mean, uh, of course I'm involved I think so. in, in, in every detail from every strap, every dial, every hand, every uh, so we little detail. But it's a group of people, so mm -hmm. it's not only myself. It's uh, We have great people in marketing, yeah. doing all the market studies, uh, etc. And, um, and of course the design team. We have a strong technical team. So I would say they're six seven people very experienced people around the table coming from other brands but also uh, being part uh, of writing or having been part of writing since many years so i think it's a good mix but you know uh, alexander you know that any change uh, you know creates um, fears um, the the most important thing is is the uh, silent majority uh, and big majority and i think the response in asia has been tremendous i mean uh, these our sales it was have, you wrote it on instagram it, it have been with, the, with, the to, with the retailers in japan i mean uh, but also in china in hong kong in singapore as you know we have been touring and um, the results have been far exceeding our expectations okay. and 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 we had the strong launch also in, in france last monday and people were expect and, and you know that writing of france is one of the key yeah. writing uh countries and and there they, they loved it they loved mm. everything we're doing um and um, i give you an example remember when porsche uh launched uh the cayenne and the panamera and all these and the debates <laughs> and the diesel uh, <laughs> and and all the all these things and you had these loud reactions but at yeah. the end of the day it's it's what really counts is a consumer yeah he is the only judge of it and um and um, and taking the example of Porsche, uh, the 911, by the way, is not the number one selling uh, product at Porsche. It's uh, it's the Cayenne because it's a consumer's choice, and mm. we have to serve and and yeah. to be close to the end consumer who loves the brand, etc. Um, and we have to listen to to the watch geeks, but it's it's all point oh 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 one percent of the population. And when you're in my age. You know, at 52, 53, you you take all these things in a much more relaxed way than uh, many years uh, uh, earlier. Uh, you're repeating history, as I told when we started the interview. When you started at IWC, you were much younger. You really shaked the whole company, turned it upside down. You pro you did pro some provocations. You uh, you shocked the, the hardcore community, especially especially those in Europe. But in the end, it worked out. The company is highly successful. And if you're repeating the same story with uh, other with other uh, uh, focuses and other
the products uh, with Breitling, I'm absolutely convinced that the whole show will be successful in the end of the day. Uh, you're, you're too professional to, to, to miss the exercise, I think. We have, we have a plan, um, of course, a uh, three years plan, and it's always difficult you know, to explain a brand with, with a punctual product or measurement. Yeah. Of course, I would love to explain to you, Alexander, today, well, let's the go. two years, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. The two years uh, uh, strategy, but I think it would... Uh, it, uh, it, it's, Your competitors it's, uh, are listening. <laughs> it's too early, but uh, there will be amazing uh, novelties also at Basel, yeah. by the way, on more historical products, yeah. on the Navitimer. So we are not going to see all, everything uh, tonight? No, yeah. no, no. It's only the Navitimer 8, but we're going to do a lot of work on Navitimer 1 in Basel. And in fall, uh, we are going to introduce also a new line, or mm. actually relaunching a line of the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think in the after 18 months, also including the new advertising campaign and the way we will communicate also with the boutiques, I think in the next 18 months you will have a, a clearer 360 um, understanding on, on uh, where we're going. And indeed, we have a great team. We have people from uh, all the big uh, watch uh, companies, from Audemars, Giger, uh, of course, IWC, etc., uh, working uh, with us. Um, and and they bring in such a great experience, also uh, from colleagues from Hondinki, etc. So we have a, a phenomenal melting pot of very qualified people. Mm -hmm experienced people, senior people, uh, who, who, uh, who helped to, to develop that new strategy. And I think we're all convinced um, we are a little bit more open with our retailers than we are with the press at this moment in time. Uh, because they carry uh, basically yeah, they are the, selling your products uh, they are yeah. selling our products so, okay. um, and um, I think they're very supportive extremely supportive and things are doing extremely well mm. uh, so I'm very confident about uh, about that strategy sometimes he's also listening to what I'm saying by the way oh, but I'm <laughs> always reading and always no, listening no, it's, to it's, what you're saying we're, 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 no no it's not we're just discussing things and we're open minded both so Josh thank you uh, last question uh, um, the story with celebrities, the story uh, you have been introducing with RWC, are you repeating this or are probably this time the products going to be the superheroes? Uh, okay, uh, to start with, and this is why we have this exhibition, this yeah. travel exhibition, uh, we will talk really about the history of the brand, about the, the product as hero. And actually, we're, I'm going to make fun about myself tonight, about uh, celebrities, etc. Once we've set the, f the ground and the floor uh, about what the brand stands for, what the DNA is, of course we're going to review advertising campaign as I mentioned it, and, um, and we will work sometimes with celebrities, but I would say um, less than what you would expect, and it will be a very authentic campaign with famous people which might not be known by the public hmm. I see which is very different uh, than them than telling a kind of a story about why they are wearing the product or what no 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 no, no, no. but what was important for us in communication is to be credible to be authentic to be real and to be able to tell stories around, for instance, an emergency, because we're going to push also the, the watches for professionals, etc., uh, to talk about our pilot's watches, to talk about our uh, mm. diving's watches. So we need real people mm. telling the story. And uh, so there will be a mix of people you might know. Uh, and Is John Travolta uh, going to stay? No, no, we've, uh, even before I, I joined the company, the, the contract was not renewed. Mm. Um, so there will be, as you call them celebrities, but there will be mostly people uh, who are top in their fields, but who, who uh, the, the wider public will not know, but the, we need... By what they're doing and what they're... Exactly. Okay. I mean. yeah. Thank you very much you. for the outlook. All the best and, uh, yeah, enjoy yourself playing around <laughs> with, yeah. with Breitling. You wanted to say? Uh, uh, no, no, I mean, um, we're not playing around. Are we? No, no, play. No, I, 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 I suppose you have fun. All the best, Josh. Thanks, Thank Alexander. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Alexander. Thank you.